This is the video solution for exam 3, spring 17. And this first problem is a translation problem, a vehicle translation problem. And uh, looking carefully at the, at the wording of the problem, it says that it has rear wheel drive and we're looking for the maximum acceleration up the hill. The maximum acceleration implies that we're at the slip condition. And because it is rear wheel drive, we're looking for the slip condition at point C. So that's what we're noting here is the maximum acceleration is when the slip occurs at C. That means that the force of friction is equal to mu normal or mu times the normal force at C. Next thing is the free body diagram and it's important to draw normal forces and mg. Now here I've got two uh, components of mg. mg cosine theta coming into the hill and mg sine theta going downhill. And those directions are important. It's important that you can express that that's the places or that's the directions for, of those components. The other thing is the force of friction. The force of friction should be applied at the place the place where it occurs or where it is applied. Um, so you should draw the arrow going forward at the rear wheel tire. Again, it goes forward, the force of friction goes in this direction because it's causing the acceleration to go in this direction. And we also want that MA vector. So anyway, draw all those pieces on the free body diagram and then you won't forget them when it comes to equation time. So let's, again, talk about the equation. Let's do a moment equation. And it's often convenient to do a moment equation about the point that's, um, that uh, it's something other than the point that you care about. And really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that normal force at C. So I'm going to solve, uh, or I'm going to write the moment equation about point B. And you can see what I've done here. And uh, the, the thing to note here is the mass times acceleration vector is going in this direction, about point C. That's what that, that's what that you know, direction of it is. And so it's going in the counterclockwise direction. I called counterclockwise direction as positive, so that means the SIGN of my MA vector, MA vector is positive. So that should be a plus on that side. All right, and then the force equation. Um, some of the forces in the x is mass times acceleration in the x, and we'll get mu c is driving it forward. You got that mg sine theta going down the hill, and that goes ma. Anyway, two equations, two unknowns. We'll solve that for the acceleration and the um, and the normal force of c. All right. So how do we grade this? Uh, this uh, the free body diagram is worth four or five points. Looks like I have uh, four points for the free body diagram. Four points for this understanding, five, five points for this understanding that the slip condition happens at C. The force equation was six points and the moment equation was ten points. Okay, this next, the next problem was the... Um, was the sum of the moments about O is equal to I O alpha problem? Again, we did a couple of these in class and in uh, in homework. And what we're looking for is that when you release this thing or when the string is broken, then it begins to rotate in this direction. We were looking for the initial angular acceleration. Before that, however, we had a couple of statics uh, things I wanted you to understand. Is that we want to find that tension before the string gets broke, broke er, before the string gets cut. And uh, to do that, we draw a free body diagram. And uh, we need to have those reactions, OX and OY. We need to have the MG. We need to find the center of gravity here. And note, note that the center of gravity occurs 0.15 away from the point O. Uh, and then the tension and the si uh, tension sine goes up and the tension cosine goes that way. And what I was looking for is to do a sum of the moments about O as I is zero equation to find out what the tension is, and we see the tension is equal to 76.3. Now, um, what is the tension after the string is cut was not intended to be a trick. It was intended to be a hint, um, and that we don't include that tension once it starts rotating. And so that's what I was just trying to communicate here, is that the tension goes to zero. And then once it's, uh, so once that tension goes away and it begins to rotate, we do some of the moments about O as I O alpha. There's probably more than one way to, uh, to do this, but I find that using the uh, parallel axis theorem and finding the mass moment of inertia about the point of rotation is usually the easiest. So I'm going to do 1 12th ML squared plus MD squared, and you find the I O is 1.8. And some of the moments about O, and you get up to alpha is equal to 16.35. Okay, this next problem was a homework problem. We did this 
uh, exact picture uh, in homework. Um, a couple of values were changed very slightly, but um, what are we doing here? I'm pulling this force, or I'm pulling this roll of paper with a force, and it causes an angular acceleration. Uh, there's going to be a force of friction that resists it, and so a couple of things to note as we're solving this problem is that the slip condition occurs at the normal force at C. So the force of friction here is equal to mu normal at C or mu C. Second thing to note is that this is a two, the AB is a two-force member and the static's two-force member rules apply. So let's first draw a free body diagram. So I got a pulling force, I got MG and a C and a force of friction. I got that AB, which is the two-force member, and I'd really like you to put on your free body diagrams the components of AB, the AB cosine theta and AB sine theta. And when you put them all in there, you have much, much less chance of forgetting them when you do your uh, equations. So let's start with the force equation. Some of the forces in the x is equal to zero. It is equal to zero because the center of gravity is not moving in the x direction, and it is also not moving in the y direction. So that means that some of the forces in the y is also equal to zero. And I can solve, or I can put all those, through, uh, those together. You know, and I also uh, put a, 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 you actually could, there are two unknowns here, you could actually solve uh, for those two unknowns, but I went ahead and uh, did the moment equation as well. Some of the moments about A is equal to IA alpha, where IA is uh, the point of rotation, which is right there, it is a cylinder, so that's one half m r squared, plugging that into the moment equation, and I got three equations, three unknowns. And what I did was I solved this with RREF. And there's other ways you could have done that, but I was did I did suggest that if you did solve it with a matrix and you did RREF, I was going to give you a small amount of extra credit. When you do that, you find that alpha is equal to 2.6 and AB is equal to 129.5. And AB, the force in AB is also the reaction at B, and that's what I wanted you to uh, wanted you to solve for. Oh, I forgot to tell you how, how many points there were. So anyway, the the, the free body diagram uh, and each equation are worth about five points apiece. Uh, the concepts that we were looking for um, were uh, uh, this slip condition uh, up here. Uh, the slip, well, not that one. The slip condition up here. Where are we? Uh, this this business up here. That was important. That was worth several points. And also the fact that, uh, and, and finding uh, B magnitude was also worth uh, about four points. So again, if I gave you uh, a score where I took off more than about five points for any one of the pieces, then that may, may have been an error. So please see me if you think that I uh, graded you incorrectly or too harshly. Okay, uh, these next six problems are um, a combination of there's some of them are chapter 16 problems and some chapter 17 problems. This, this first one was I wanted you to use the IC method. So the first thing you do when you use the IC method is find the IC. First recognize the, the directions of the velocities. So you have to know that the velocity of VC goes in that direction because it's given that with that little solenoid. The velocity B has to be going straight up. You draw uh, perpendicular lines to the known velocity vectors and you find the instantaneous center and that it happens to be right there. When then you find M and N, and you can say that the velocity of B it was just 2, you can find the omega, and then you can find B, VB, was equal to N omega, and VB is 1.15. That's really the first part of the problem. This was worth about 7 points. The next thing is to find out what happens uh, with A. Now, many people said that, oh, because these are parallel velocity vectors, velocity of A is equal to velocity of B. It turns out that it is the same magnitude, but it's not the same direction. So the parallel velocity vectors um, concept that you may have used uh, is an erroneous concept. It is not v of a is not equal to v b due to uh, due to the fact that they are parallel velocity vectors, because uh, you, our parallel velocity vector. Um, analysis uh, would su would have suggested that omega is equal to zero, but clearly omega is not equal to zero. Omega's uh, got a value. So I did not take off if you use the parallel velocity vector reasoning, but it was incorrect. Okay, so what is the velocity of A? Well, velocity of A is part of this rigid body, 
And it all everything rotates about the instantaneous center at this point. So you have to find this little distance Q. And again, it just turns out that that Q is the same distance N because this happens to be an equilateral triangle. And so this distance here is the same. Velocity of A rotates about the IC. So at this point, the velocity of A goes straight down. And it does have the same magnitude as VB because, because those distances are the same. It's not because they're parallel. And uh, this, was, uh, this was worth about three points. The second uh, problem on this page, uh, number five, uh, I was wanting you to use the relative velocity equation. The velocity equation has to be set up properly, but we first recognize that the velocity of B goes in this direction and the velocity of C goes in that direction. And so what I was looking for are the components and the directions of those two velocities. That's what this is all about. Those were worth about two points apiece. Um, you have to understand that VC has a, has a direction downward uh, with a negative J component and a, and a positive I component. Then we're looking for the equation. The velocity of C is equal to the velocity of B. We need to do the cross product. And the, I drew the, the omega of VC in, in the positive K direction. So when I put it in my, my velocity equation, I get omega K is positive and I need to cross it with the position vector, which is 0.5 in the i direction and negative 2 in the j direction. Anyway, crossing that product and you get two equations, two unknowns, and you can solve that for the velocity of c, which is what we were looking for. All right, this next one um, was a translation problem with, uh, um, it, that turns out is a tipping problem as well. But it's a translation problem with internal forces. And we did a couple of these in class as well, right? class and homework. But here we understand that we're going to lift this up. And when you lift it up, and if you go too fast, you'd have the danger of tipping this thing over. And you'd be rotating about B, and A goes to zero. So this understanding is also an important understanding about how these problems work. If you were to say, if you were said that uh, the, the, uh, the that it's a tipping problem and B goes to zero, that would be a, a real misunderstanding of what's going on. And in, in this class, if you haven't figured it out by now, understanding what's going on is not only key to doing well, <laughs> but it's it, it speaks to me because that's what our, that's what dynamics is, is really about. Is we have to understand. What happens uh, when you step on the gas or step on the brakes? In this case, if you lift the, if you lift the load up too, too rapidly, you can tip this thing over this way, and it would rotate about B, and A goes to zero. So that would be the maximum safe acceleration is how, what, the, what the, uh, uh, the, the magnitude of the acceleration of lifting that load. Anyway, so that's what I was looking for here. That was worth a couple of points. Only the load moves. Uh, some people... Um, had uh, uh, we're trying to make both the mg of the of the forklift move as well as the mg of that, and that uh, uh, that would have been an error. So this actually is a one equation, one unknown problem. If you sum the moments about b, so that's what I did. Sum the moments about b, and it's convenient because a is going to zero to sum the moments about b. So I got mg going this way, got an mg going this way, and that's all we have on the left side of the equation. Uh, since a is going to zero, and then m a of the of the mass has is going up. So if I sum the moment, if I uh, if I have positive counterclockwise moment, again this mass times acceleration vector is positive counterclockwise, and this sign over there is positive. All right, the um, uh, Corvette stopping problem. We did this actually in class, so I was hoping that you would have remembered pretty much how to do that, but stops it uh, at 60 miles per hour, which is 88 feet per second. A couple of things you can do. You can uh, solve this with V equals AT and find out the acceleration is 44, or you can do V squared is equal to V sub square, zero squared plus 2AS, and you get acceleration is 43. Now, why aren't they exactly the same? Well, the reason they're not the same is because if you happen to stop exactly with constant acceleration from 60 miles an hour and 90 feet, it wouldn't actually take 2.0 seconds. So they're close, but it, the the time would have been slightly different using constant acceleration. So, but this is this is pretty often under measurement kind of things. You can say, oh, it stops there, and then somebody else will measure it, and but it actually uh, was a different time than. So it's really not exact constant acceleration, and that's that was kind of the the 
realization that we, I think we went through in class a little bit. So it doesn't have to be the same because we're going to assume constant acceleration, but that assumption isn't, isn't entirely perfect and it isn't entirely correct. Once you find the acceleration, then you understand that all the wheels slip. And that means the force of friction is mu mg and some of the forces in the x is mass times acceleration in the x. And you can get a couple of different uh, uh, coefficients of friction in order to make this stop in time. Okay, this next problem uh, was a CAM problem, and I asked you to use the absolute method, recognizing here that this is an isosceles triangle, and then you can say that x is equal to 2r cosine theta. Taking the derivative twice, you get x dot and x double dot. Solving that for theta is equal to 60, and omega is equal to 10, or theta dot is equal to 10, you can get, uh, you can get negative 0.866 meters per second. Second thing is if theta dot is constant, that means theta double dot is equal to zero. That does not mean that x double dot is equal to zero, but just the theta dot, or theta double dot is equal to zero. So you still have to take that derivative, still have to plug it in, and you can get that is equal to minus five. And this last problem is uh, the relative equation for acceleration. And here we have to recognize that as this thing rotates, whoops, sorry, as this thing rotates, uh, the point B is going to have a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration. The normal acceleration always points in toward the center of rotation. So the normal acceleration is our omega squared. The tangential acceleration is our alpha, and I calculated those. And those are worth a couple of points apiece. Second thing, or the third thing to note is the acceleration of C is only in the I direction. I define positive I going in this direction, so I wanted you, and I hope that I actually didn't mark off if you didn't draw it correctly, but I should, probably could have. But anyway, the acceleration of C is positive going in this direction. And then we set up the relative equation. Acceleration of C, acceleration of B, alpha cross C with respect to B. The position vector of C with respect to B is 1.2 in the I direction. Do the, and then the cross product here. And then minus omega squared R of C with respect to B. And that's what that is. Anyway, multiply all those things out. And you get acceleration of C only in the I direction is equal to negative 54. If you solve the rest of it, uh, you can separate the I's and J's here. And you can say that this is one point, negative 1 1.8. This uh, multiplied out is equal to positive 1.8. And you confirm that there is no acceleration of C in the J direction. It uh, wasn't really required, I didn't ask that, but, uh, but it is uh, good to note that when you do the cross product that the, you do get the correct understanding. So anyway, a couple points here, a couple points here, cross product was worth a couple points, and then solving this was worth a couple points.